And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another week, another edition of the most awesome PM show. I am your host, Miss Mandy Parsons, and I have with me the longest stand in co host, I think, in history, Miss Danica the Great, and I think I think that she probably probably will become a permanent host, maybe someday. And if not totally for all the time and the whole show every single time, I think John has said, yeah, pull her in every time. She's cool. So, Danica, you are the permanent stand-in co-host. <laughs> whoop, whoop. What an honor. Very glad to be back here. And uh, I just... It's awesome because I get to hang out with you, my bestie, and talk about random things that are from politics to angry things to Bitcoin to video games to girly stuff. So John's awesome for letting me have this. Well, he's he's a good judge of character, and he thinks that you and Liberty Phoenix are good people. So I, first of all, will not disagree with him in any form or fashion, but speaking of Liberty Phoenix, he is a slacker. He, he's, doing yeah. this, he's doing this thing called work. Who does that? Yeah, yeah, work. Who does that? I did that this week, but I I actually kind of like working, kind of, you know, which is like the very first thing that I can honestly say about any of the jobs I've had. And I've had a few jobs, so that's a huge stepping stone. But other than that, like work, again, who does that? I know, nobody should work. Right. Gosh, who does that? Let's farm and stuff. I do it. I work. But I go and I energize the young minds of America. You touch lives inappropriately. Oh, no. I used to sub at this school (laughs) that had this poster on the wall. It had all these little kids, like, being productive. This kid was coloring, and this other child was doing math on a blackboard. And they they were being really, really productive. And the caption on the bottom of the picture says, Touch a child, touch the future. Touch a child, touch the future. And then the child can show us where they, in fact, touched. They were, in fact, touched either in the heart or on, you know, on the hand or on the nose. I mean, you know, let your imagination run wild. Yeah, and what's really funny is that a friend of mine became the assistant principal at said school, and I told him, oh, I used to spend time over there all the time you need to look in your school for this picture. And I sent him the picture because who's not going to take a cell phone picture of a poster that says, touch a child, touch the future. I mean, I did because I was like, this is wrong on so many levels. And I sent it to him and said, take a look for this picture. So he found it at school and he took the picture back to me and he goes, this is coming down. (laughs) And I was like, no, why would you do that? If you touch a child, you touch the future. So in a pro, not. <laughs> yeah, so he was just like, uh, I think not. But he was laughing, and I just was like, well, you know what? Hey, it's a it's a picture. It's inspirational on in somebody's mind, I'm sure. But he you know he laughed, and I asked him not too long ago. I was like, was that is that picture still up? He goes, yeah. <laughs> That is very very funny. <laughs> yeah, it is really funny. So so that's a good story. Now on the other on another note, I got pulled back into the principal's office last Friday. Oh uh, what? Oh yeah. It seems like even though I am doing things right now, I'm still not doing them right enough. Um, so now they have some coaches, not coaches like sports coaches, but they have coaches what they call literacy coach and math coach. These are the people who set literacy and math up in the school. Um, Apparently there's a way that this school likes to do things, which is fine, but it's very helpful when they inform new teachers about the school procedures. And it turns out that I'm supposed to, as a new teacher, I'm supposed to have a mentor and I am supposed to have this checklist of things to do, none of which I ever received. So is it any wonder I don't know what I'm doing because I don't have these resources at, at my fingertips? So I should have known. the literacy coach, she comes in, she she watches my room, and then she goes and reports back to the AP. And nobody ever tells them what I'm doing right. The AP doesn't come into my room ever except once, and she doesn't see exactly what's going on. So the only word she's getting is the literacy coach. 
and the literacy coach for some reason has it out for me or doesn't know what she's doing or I, I have no idea. But the fact of the matter is that I, on a positive note, I had to teach my fifth graders two weeks ago how to write paragraphs. Yes, we're, we're serious, America. My students do not like to write. They will not write. And if they can, they will skip it altogether. Well, two weeks ago, I said, there are two reasons that you all are not writing paragraphs. I said, number one, it's either because you don't like to write and you refuse, or two, you don't know how. I said, and I guarantee that there's somebody in this class who doesn't know how, so we're going to learn how to do this all together. We learned how to write a paragraph, and by golly, we learned about the Constitution yesterday with the Civil War and the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. I pulled a worksheet off of the computer today about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, regardless of how people feel about the Constitution. It's part of history, and those children produced a paragraph for me about the 14th and 15th Amendments, and it was sixth grade rigor. Wow. Are the paragraphs perfect? No. But when you're getting something out of kids who two weeks ago wouldn't even write, you've got to know that you've done something right. Absolutely, and that's that's awesome. So my kids are producing results. I couldn't be happier. I've now got something to take back to people and say, look, my kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing. This is a milestone for any teacher. It lets me know that no matter how hard they're coming down on me, that I am still a gifted teacher who knows what she's doing, who just needs to learn policy and procedure. Uh, people just... Leave, uh, leave you alone. Seriously. Like, can't they just, they need to keep their noses out of your business. Well, the thing is, is that I'm not opposed to people giving me feedback. I want feedback. I want to become the best I can be. But when you are giving me feedback, fee- or when you're telling me I'm not doing something right and you're not offering me feedback, um, I can't grow. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know why they're not giving you feedback because obviously if they want you to change, they should be providing feedback. So what's the deal? Yeah, I'm not sure, but they're going to be in my room teaching some this week. So I'll get to monitor or watch them and take notes and we'll see what happens from there. Awesome. Yeah, I um, I started my new job this week and it's just, it's been amazing because I have, I mean, I'm in my late 20s, and, you know, the last job that I worked at, I worked for for six years. But, you know, prior to, you know, and uh, the one that I had before that, I worked for about a year and a half. So I've had, you know, I've had my long-standing jobs, and I've certainly had those new jobs that you're not very, you know, that you don't really like to talk about. Like, I, you know, had my share of retail. Um, at one point, I was working three jobs because I was trying to pay off my finances as fast as possible. And, I mean, I've had, you know, you know, several different jobs. I've had retail. Um, I had a very short fast food stint. Uh, I had, you know, I've had, num- I've had numerous amounts of jobs. This job that I'm having right now, like I have been going, I've been there for about the last three days now. And I can also tell you, I have never enjoyed going to work as much as I have now. And I, I definitely did not feel that with the job that I was working, right, the one right before I got this one, the one that I was absolutely miserable about. And I definitely did not feel it. The last job that I worked for, I was there for six years, and I did not feel this way about the job that I was working at before that one. So I know that this job is definitely a very good fit, and I could not be more happy that I'm in this. I feel incredibly fortunate, and I'm just, I feel, I, you know, I wake up feeling energized and ready to learn, and I'm impressing my superiors, and it's just, it's wonderful. I, just, I, you know, I feel like I have to kind of. Not really so much jump on the soapbox and preach about it, but I just I'm really really happy I got it, and I feel like all of the trials and tribulations that I was having and that I was talking to you about and you know telling everybody about, I feel like they finally you know have have stopped for the most part, and I'm just really really happy. I'm really really glad to hear that. That's how I felt when I got this teaching position, and you know I I have to take a look. I don't know what people believe in. I don't know what kind of listeners that we have out there. What they're excuse me, what their religious beliefs are. Um, I don't know, but I'm a believer in God. And even though I've had hardships and trials in this new position, it's like he's watching out for me. And I say this because I signed up for a training class weeks ago. And it's four months long, and it's one Saturday each month. 
I went to that training class on Saturday, the day after I had the conversation with the assistant principal. And I didn't exactly know what they wanted from me. I, I wasn't sure. And like I said, it's not like they were giving me feedback. Mm-hmm. But I go into this class that's in the, at another elementary school in the county, and I meet all these fifth grade teachers from across the county, and it's being taught by literacy coaches that are not at our school. So I'm listening, and she starts showing this PowerPoint, and she starts illustrating what I need to be doing in my class, essentially. So it's like this is the second time that I have sought out resources on my own and the answers were given directly to me. So I don't really know what people believe in. I'm I'm a spiritual individual, but it is like I'm being looked out for. And it, it's just nice to know that some celestial being is looking out for me. And that's great. And that's awesome. I It feels wonderful being in that position where you feel that things are – Finally going right, I know that you said that you had been searching for a full-time teaching position for, I believe you said, two years, five yeah. years? like Two years, yeah. Two years, okay. Um, yeah, and you know, here I had been. You know, I had just moved, and mine, obviously, of course, my journey was much shorter, but it was just super frustrating with the job market out there. And so it just it feels like things are actually really going right, and I'm doing everything I can to not take, you know, to, I'm doing everything I can to take advantage of, the awesome people that I get to work with and the job that I have and just, and move forward with it. You know, you're impressing your, your kids are impressing you with the schooling that they're doing. I'd say uh, they asked me to do a couple of things in Excel and they were telling me that many people that started this position, you know, say they know Excel, but really they don't. And here I am just flying away and I'm just, you know, it's basic Excel stuff. I'm sure it's going to get harder as it goes on, but I'm just like, I'm just right now doing what, it was required and like, Oh, you wouldn't have any idea how many people will show up and just know absolutely nothing. So I, and I just, I, it feels really, really good that I was really kind of blowing away their expectations of how I'm learning. So I'm like, yes, they know that, you know, I'm, you know, really, a really good qualified employee and that they're going to do everything they can. The company that I work for, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say who I work for. Um, but, the company that I'm working for is just wonderful to work with. They really do care about their employees. Um, and, you know, you know, and I'll definitely go on a little bit more about just the kind of quality I can expect from that. And I, I certainly hope that you, you feel the same way in your position. I know that we're a school that's being looked at. We're under a microscope. Um, I don't think in some aspects we could probably be performing better than we are. Um, but, there's room for growth everywhere, and I'm most willing to go the, the great mile to do what I need to do and help get the school where it needs to be, but I, I need positive feedback. I need to know that my strides are being met and that they are looking at me and seeing the things I'm doing. That's very important. And that's even that's even better because you are in a position where you have a chance to. I mean, and I know that it's going to take time, but you have a chance to take the school and really help it. You know, get noticed for good things, not just being micromanaged. Yeah, and I will get my opportunity, but right now I just need to take advantage of my team members and um, pick their brains and ask them for help and. You know, things things will keep rolling along. Yeah, absolutely. The, the place that I'm currently that I'm working at right now, I, it's just how how I mean, how really do I put it? I mean, first off is that, um, and you know, again, they really do care about their employees because just how they um, they provide workstations for their employees to work at. Um, it's funny because I um my previous job, I worked with one computer monitor and tabbing between things could sometimes be a chore. I have dual monitors at the position that I'm at right now, which makes alt tabbing between, you know, different kinds of back screens and things so much more convenient and makes me so much more efficient at where, at where I'm at. And, you know, another, you know, small thing that's really nice is that people are allowed to really personalize their work, their computers. Like at my previous job, the background that we had was just green. We worked on micro. We worked on Windows 2000. Let's just let's you know let's put oh out basic this. Yeah, and I worked with Windows 2007 products. I have Windows 7 now, with my, with 
my, with Office uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 2010 products. So I have Excel 2010, Word 2010. And the neat thing is that everyone at their workstation has a personalized background, whether it's, a, you know, pictures of their dogs, of their no, family. I know what yours is. Yours is ponies. Not yet. They're still trying to get everything worked out. So I currently don't have any sort of login. I'm just kind of shadowing everybody, making sure I learn the tricks of it. But, you know, I did order a My Little Pony lanyard that I'm going to wear my ID badge on. I did have one before I left home, but unfortunately the charm on it um, did break. So I did order another one. So I will be bringing out My Little Pony flair to the office. You can definitely be sure about that. Oh, no doubt. I would be surprised if you said anything else. Yeah, and I just, it feels great because people come by and, and they're all saying, oh, how is she doing? And then my... The, the guy that's training me says, well, she's been here two days. This was yesterday. She's been here two days. She knows where the bathroom is. She knows where the break room is, and she knows where her desk is. Just like, okay, she's a, you know, she's ahead of the curve. Uh, and in the place I'm working at, it's like a huge open room. I have my own desk, but it's a huge open room. And I'm kind of like, I guess I can kind of see where people would get lost. But, I mean, you know, I'm very situationally aware of it. That I guess in most people, so it's not that hard for me to be like, oh, hey, that's where my desk is. I, I can I can easily spot it. So some of the things they're saying is extremely amusing. Um, well, you know, I'm kind of confused at the moment. Not about you. Um, I'm reading my friend's status on Facebook. She said, today we buried my only living grandparent, my grandmother. Well, why would you bury a living grandparent? That... Wow, that's a very interesting and morbid question. I, I I know she's assuming that, you know, that that person is now deceased. Hopefully, but you know, people have been buried alive. Have you ever seen Brokeback Mountain? Not Brokeback Mountain. My goodness, uh, Cold Mountain. No, but I have seen Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, at one point someone was buried alive, and they can certainly break free. But you know, she definitely, you know. Structuring your sentences is very important, people. Remember that. Um, well, and in breaking news, rapper Waka Flocka is hiring a blunt roller and is paying $50,000 a year to do it. I saw that. Is, are they located in either Washington or Colorado? Um, I don't think they care. They are a rapper. Well, they're probably in California then where you, know, you have to have a card, but you it could theoretically be legal. How long would they get away with that? Would that just be under the table? Let's see. It's it probably would just be staff. It'd probably just be like staff or you know whatever they call them. Support staff stuff, yeah, something like that. Dude, that would be like the best job ever. Yeah, and sure, he's hiring. Go go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, it's funny because I remember reading that article and I looked up some of his videos because I had never heard of him. I'm not really into rap. I like Eminem and some other rap, but for the most part, um, it's not my preferred style of music. And I recognized the guy and I'm like, that guy looks so familiar. And I looked it up and he was one of the main characters in those cheesy, scary movie films. In fact, I believe he played the part of Eminem in Scary Movie 3, I want to say. I have no idea. So he's he's been around for a little, and some of his videos are actually very uh, they're very funny and they're very you know very catchy lyrics and stuff. Highly offensive, of course, but very catchy. Yeah, um, you know if this doesn't work out, maybe I'll go join Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka, y'all. What's better than joining Kanye West? Uh, I I, I cannot describe. Just I don't want to say hatred because that's kind of a it's a very heavy word to use on someone and it takes me a lot to actually really legitimately hate someone, but I'm just, I'm so disgusted by how he acts. And I just, you know, I, you know, I guess it's no surprise that he married yet another, you know, equally disgusting, despicable human being, Kim Kardashian, but just the audacity that last year, his album drops, Jesus, I believe it's called. He trying and associates himself with being a high piety and on top of that, like, and I, I don't know if this is an Onion article. Please tell me if it is. I mean, if it is, that's really funny. If not, but I guess there was something in the news about how he was trying to make one of his fans who was handicapped stand up. Oh, no, that was legit. 
That was legit. Ah, oh, again, yeah. why are we supporting this man? I don't know, but how do you fix a broken jack-o'-lantern? I don't know. With a pumpkin patch. Now, in all, let's go back to Kanye. I had to interject with that. Um, he's a douchebag. I'm just going to throw that out there. He's a total douchebag. Oh, he's a total douchebag. Believe that. Total douchebag. So Kanye West, who doesn't support reading and says that kids shouldn't have to read, but then wants everybody to go out and buy his book. Yeah. How, how's that going to work out, Kanye? Not real it, sure, but let me tell you, it's not hard when the book is nothing but pictures so you can make your own story because he's not literate. No, no, he's not. That reminds me of, um, wasn't there someone from the Jersey Shore that wrote a book too? Oh, God, I don't know. I've, I saw that show maybe all of twice, and I only watched for 20 minutes at a time and said, I can't do this. Yeah, if you're looking for a way to kill your brain cells, that's the that's that's just a perfect way. But uh, you know, it, I I have my own I have my own share of trashy reality TV shows and some that are just like what to watch. Like the other day, I was really bored and I decided to put on 19 Kids and Counting because it was on Netflix. And 19 Kids and Counting, like they're so wholesome Col- and cultish. Hesh. Cultish. They're so cultish. And so, quote unquote, wholesome that it it drives you nuts because you're like, where are the skeletons? Where are the drama filled? And there's nothing. And it's like this is so boring. How is this still going on? Well, I'll tell you this: there was um, there's a man who used to live in the state of Georgia. He helped coordinate and organize the Georgia for Ron Paul grassroots movement a few years ago. And when we were hanging out one day as a group, he's like, yeah, I have two kids. And we're like, oh, well, where are they? He goes, I don't really get to see them. My wife and I, we got a divorce. And we're like, sorry to hear that. He goes, well, the reasons we got divorced are kind of crazy. And we're like, why? He's like, because basically I left a cult. And I said, what? Uh-huh. And he goes, he goes, yes, basically I left a cult. We were a member of a church, and basically we left the church, but I left. My family didn't want to leave, and after I left the church, she divorced me, and they said that my family couldn't have anything to do with me anymore. Oh, wow. And he goes, you have probably have seen or at least heard of, of people at this at this church. And we're like, well, what church? He goes, you know, those those people, the 19 kids and county people. I was like, yeah. He goes, they're part of the same church. Oh, my gosh. It's a cult. It is a legitimate cult. These people, even though they seem wholesome and nice, they're brainwashed. Oh, I'm sure they are. I mean, not, you know, I'm sure they're nice people and everything, but anyone that has that kind of, large family being like I don't care who you are like there is some sort of you know brainwashing cult I you know and I would know because I do have a family member that does have a large number of kids and you know thankfully I I do believe they've kind of come out of the whole cult you know cultish thing and have been slowly adjusted to real life but yeah just it's it was really weird because Okay, so for example, all the girls until recently all had to wear either dresses or long skirts. And now that, you know, she, and like I said, she has, you know, kids into the double, into double digits. I, you know, won't say, you know, how many exactly. But so, you know, obviously as she's gotten older, she and her husband have gotten older, they become a little bit more lax. And, you know, the, you know, some of the kids that are now growing up are able to get into more modern clothing. But, the way that she raised these kids, like these kids have just, you know, they're they're smart for the most part. They were all homeschooled. They're smart for the most part, but they don't really have any life skills. Like the oldest daughter um, can't make any decisions for herself when she's flustered, when she's faced with two options, she gets worked up and she can't do make any decisions without the help of her mother. Um, her father hasn't really made very wise financial decisions. Um, when his when one of his sons wanted to go to college, he basically shunned and disowned him until his son proved him wrong, and then they were finally reconciling. But, yeah, it's just 
there's there, you know, I, you know, I hate to say it, but when you have that many kids, there's something that is backing that up, and it's mostly cultish and brainwashing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was just shocked when he said that. Now, he's happily remarried, and it seems that his children have gotten in touch with him, but I, mean, I, w- I was just shocked. I think there was a meme going around a few years ago that said, uh, that had a picture of said family. Gosh, what's their last name? Oh, which family? The kids with the people of nineteen kids. What's their last name? Oh, um, uh, I know the father's name is Jim Bob because it's a terrible, terrible name. Yeah. So what's their um, last name? What's their last name? The I am googling it right now. Uh, uh Duggar. The Duggars, the Duggars, I said. Yes. And, uh, yeah, the Duggars. Um, I know there was a meme going around a few years ago. She had, like, multiple kids, not the 19 that she has now, but um, the bottom of the meme said, vagina is not a clown car. Eh. Not, you know, not trying to be, like, completely mean derogatory, but can you imagine, like, having all those kids? It just, oh, it just makes me want to cringe. Oh, now I'm trying to message right now Liberty Phoenix. And I said, why don't you jump on when you get back if you want to? But autocorrect turned it into Barack. Oh, my God. (laughs) How dare you, Mandy? You're such a statist. Oh, my God. I'm such a statist. Such a statist. Yes. Um, But, oh, I have have to pose a question to you. But before I do that, we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break. And we'll, well, let me get to the page where I can do that. Awesome. Um, we're going to take a commercial break so you, the, the suspense will kill you. But we will be back right after this. Awesome. You know the Constitution like the back of your hand. You've read books, listened to podcasts, attended lectures, surfed oh, no. websites, and watched what? videos. It's doing that You've stall made liberty. thing again. It is on Your mute. Life's it's goal. doing that stall thing again. But something oh, no. seems to We're be missing. To Knock it off. Continue. Stickers from LibertyStickers.com. Exercise your freedom of speech with the world's most dangerous bumper stickers. That's LibertyStickers.com. But wait. <laughs> There's more. You can buy Liberty Stickers wholesale. My Get them for 99 lady. cents each when you put 100 or more in your shopping cart in any combination. Oh my God, it Fill them or give them away. Like They're great for gun it's shows, so flea soft, markets, fairs, outreach, and more. Earn extra money, promote freedom, and spread the and word. Like whip. Need it's custom like stickers, icing. labels, or decals it's for your organization or business? Liberty Stickers cream. makes them. Go to LibertyStickers.com to order. Call 877-873-9626. LibertyStickers.com, the world's most dangerous stickers. Get ready for the epic new documentary yeah. adventure ride in your life. Like Change the picture like really, really well. of you into the global domain. Awesome. And Bella's and Burma's film. Yeah, um, I kind of have a nose like you know, nothing, nothing in this, this world works the way you think it does. I haven't been like does. completely comfortable. Like, I've stuck in a few. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works. The like, way even you if you just think put it out does. white bread and shit, mm-hmm. you should be okay. Yes, yeah. I am. Um, and I should you saw this huge difference in the super and tight. And I just I haven't been wanting them. And I'm like, oh, finally. Speak up, speak out. See the motion picture. Order your favorite. Blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. I am an autonomous government agent here to steal your livelihood. Not so fast. I'm Sovereign Filing Solutions. And I'm the Sovereign. We're teamed up. To bring you... The truth without censorship. Are you tired of being fed multi-million dollar media lies? Are you ready for the real story? Sovereign Filing Solutions is teamed up with the Sovereign newspaper to make sure you get it. And not the BS this guy behind me wants to feed you. Take the step, help make the change. Oh, come on, that's not even fair. How are we supposed to rule indiscriminately if you know what's going on? Hey, Freedomists, join me, Proof Negative. Weeknights, 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific, as we fight the New World Order together. Right here on Freedomizer Radio, your exclusive home of the Proof Negative show. 
Are you curious about what's going on in your life? About what's going on in life in general? About what's going on in the world? Politics, health, science, religion. Who are Freemasons? What's the Illuminati? What is the government and what makes it up? Who's in it? All these topics and all this information are knowledge. And knowledge is power. Here at Thrice a Daily Download, we give you that information. We download it straight through your ears into your brain. You are the one who needs to be receptive. So join us Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 11 p.m. Central Time. That's 2300 for those who love the military time. Join us and don't miss out on your daily download. Here on Freedomizer Radio. We love talking to our listeners. So join us. And I do want to remind everybody, the commercial, one of them I played, the Proof Negative show, uh, that does broadcast directly after this show tonight. It is from 9 to midnight Eastern, like you said, uh, 6 to 9 Pacific. So I hope you guys will stay tuned for that. Uh, I used to be his Tuesday night host, but I had to quit the show. It was on too late. I can't be up till midnight anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there comes a certain time where you're just like, you know what? My body just won't take five, four hours of sleep. No, I need as close to eight hours as I possibly can. I really think that's why God intended people to have children in their 20s. Because when you're in your early 20s, you can stay up and get as little sleep as possible and still, like, be great. That is true. I mean, I you know, I I tried not to do this because I'm fully aware just of the dangers that – um, having lack of sleep and you know bad nutrition can have on your body and the things that can do with it. Um, but when I was in college, you know, there was, you know, and every college can, can certainly um, uh, coincide with me with this, but there were times where I would get maybe four or five hours of sleep because there's all these projects and then I still had to study. I had homework to do and then I had, and then I had to get some sleep at some point because either I went to class or work the next day. It was it very, very tough um, balancing full-time school and full-time work. I, don't know how I did it. I could probably do it again, although I would never want to do that. Well, and I'll tell you, I can't stay up late like I used to. I'll tell you, I was averaging, and I think I still am averaging, about 20 hours of sleep during the week. The weekend is a totally different subject. But last night I came home with the intention of laying down for just a little bit, and I set my alarm for an hour and a half. I woke up, realized, you know, not doing it, and then I promptly went back to bed. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so I roughly got, you know, seven, eight hours last night and came into work feeling like a different person. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I have been trying to get at least seven and a half to eight hours of sleep, and it's just, you know, the amount of sleep that you have, just it really changes you. And I don't know about you, but if I try and take a nap in the afternoon and I wake up, like at first when I wake up, I am still as groggy as crap, and I do want to go back to sleep. After a few, like, few minutes of being like actually moving around and stuff I feel better but it's it doesn't quite compare to actually having a good long night's full of sleep oh it doesn't I'm looking so forward to Friday in fact um usually I have marching band that I announce but Friday is our open weekend so I get to I get some serious sleep on Friday that's awesome uh Friday it's funny where I'm working now it it's it's one of the most like super businessy places that I've worked in a while. I mean, I um, it's business casual. I'm mean, to the point where like you can wear sneakers with your um, clothes, but for the most part, you know they expect you to wear like skirts, slacks, you know, nice blouses and stuff like that. But you know they're fine with you wearing sneakers as long as they're in good condition because you could, you know, there are places um, outside the building where you can walk around and it's quite nice. Um, actually, when I was driving in the other day, uh, going to the building for orientation, a crane flew right out in front of me, and so it's right next to a pond. It's super beautiful, so yeah, I definitely wear my sneakers just so that at lunchtime or on breaks I can sneak out and get some fresh air. Um, but yeah, that's just yeah, it's nice to see. If, but on Fridays we get to wear jeans. That's the whole point I was going to this since I was talking about clothes. Is that Fridays we actually get to wear jeans? So it's not, you know, that's where it gets a little bit nice and casual. <laughs> and I apologize, Cindy. I don't mean to laugh, but. <laughs> My cat is pulling all of my socks out of my drawer, and it's very 
funny. No, that's okay. My mother's dog, um, she her dog will, if my mom is like changing clothes and, or taking a shower and leaves her clothing on the floor, the dog will grab the underwear and go hide it in her bed. Oh, my goodness. And my mom's like, I don't understand. I don't understand why the underwear. It's not any other clothes. It's just the underwear. So no jeans or T-shirts or anything like that? Just the underwear. Yeah, and she's, I, I think she's stopped now. She's moved on to other places. But the, my drawer is open a little bit. And so she's been <laughs> digging her paws and just grabbing them and throwing them on the ground. And it, everyone that has cats will know that they do this. But if I have a you know a fairly lightweight object on a bench or something, she likes to push her paw and bash it off and let it fall to the ground. Why? I don't know. I guess, I guess she just wants to see things fall. She wants to see the world burn. And everyone that has cats can certainly attest to this, but I've never actually seen her reach into my drawer and pull all my socks out. It was very bizarre. Oh, my cats can take out my drawers, and they will hide in the drawer. Oh, that's adorable. She hasn't done that yet. I'm sure she could if she would, though. It is a pretty amazing feat. For, she's a, And she's a little cat. My cat is really tiny, too. Like, she is about half the size of my landlord's um, cat, and she's very cute. And she, you know, she's a little torty, so she's got all these different patterns in her, and she just, yeah, she's a little skittish, too, but she's very adorable. Oh, so cute. Um, and I'll tell you, I did get home with maybe 15 minutes to spare before the show, because I, I know when we talked, I was stuck in Atlanta traffic. Guys, Atlanta traffic is serious stuff. <laughs> It is serious stuff, and people don't let you over. Now, I'm I'm a huge, huge believer in, you know, paying it forward. So I'll try to let it as many people as possible in when they're trying to get over. I'll I'll start pulling over, and these people will speed up just so I can't get over. I mean, it's one thing if you are driving next to someone, and they're like, oh, you know, sorry, I was, I was already in transition. But it's another thing entirely. When you are about two car lengths behind, there's nobody there, and you speed up just so I can't get over. That is serious planned rudeness. Yeah, extremely rude. I, I did want to ask, you know, given that you live in Atlanta, um, isn't, what's the name of the really big interstate that there, or highway? What's it called? The 285, I believe it's called? Oh, 285 is the perimeter. So you have ITP and you have OTP. So ITP is inside the perimeter, and then OTP obviously is outside the perimeter. But that's that's one of them. That goes around the city of Atlanta, literally in a circle. Okay, and then that goes through Atlanta. You've got I-20, which goes east to west, and then north to south, you have 7585. Okay, yeah, someone was talking about that the other day, um, and I wanted to just ask you about it, because I've never been to Atlanta, and that would be really something to see. It is it is truly something else. It is truly something else. So, you know, being on it is not fun. I was there on a Saturday last week, this past Saturday, and I got stuck in traffic on a Saturday. Oh, wow. It was ridiculous. It's It's stupid. I was like, what in the world? And then you get, you're like, okay, okay, now I'm going to see what's keeping me from reaching my destination, and there's nothing there. Wow. Yeah, I'm just, I don't even know. I don't even know. But I'm going to tell you, before I um, pop the statement on you that I was, uh, the question I wanted to pose to you, I just Mm -hmm. saw this on my news feed from rare.us. I'm not really familiar with this news site, but it is not um, like the onion. It says that Ron Paul's hard work is paying off, and this just caught my eye, so I want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Um, It says, Campaign for Liberty, an organization founded by Ron Paul, sent out a press release Wednesday announcing that the HR 24 bill, audit the Fed, passed by a vote of 333 to 92. Yes, I just saw that um, about a couple hours ago, right before I came on the show, and I was just blown away. I was like, what? Well, here's the thing, though, that's going to hold it back. The House is saying vote on it, and they're going to have to go to the Senate, and you know the person who's going to hold this up is Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Harry Reid is a nasty little garbage man, and he's not going to let this go through. He was the standing uh, person 
who prevented it from being voted on in the Senate last time. No matter how many times we flooded his phone, that we sent him faxes, he didn't listen. He is bought and paid for by the Democrats in the White House. But it's not just Democrats. I shouldn't even say Democrats. I should just say he's bought and paid for by whoever is controlling the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, who, you know the big company is that control the smaller ones, and they control – who sees what, I mean, you know, let's take, let's take Facebook, for example. So the, you know, creators of Facebook, the programmers, certainly control what you're able to see. Everyone knows that there was a huge news story a couple of months ago where Facebook admitted to running a test on people unconsented and, you know, unannounced that they were purposely altering the types of stories that, um, certain people would get whether they were positive or whether they were negative, seeing that, you know, whatever kinds of stories you, you were reading had an effect on your mood. And, you know, obviously, you know, some people were getting more negative stories or posts or news stories. Some people were getting more positive news stories, posts, and things like that. So Facebook, you know, if you're complaining about their algorithms, which believe me, I do too, that's a main reason why I uninstall the app for my phone and I only check from either the browser on my phone or on my PC – I mean, they're, just, they're controlling however you want to see it. And then another example is, let's say that you have a page or something. For example, I follow this girl called, um, she run, she has a Facebook page called Made You Look. She's a makeup artist, a very, very good one, because she does a lot of body paint as well as other makeup tutorials. She also has um, an Instagram, Twitter, you know, other social media profiles. Now, she's been complaining that she she has about over, I want to say, 60,000 likes on her page. She's she's fairly well known in the makeup world. Um, but when she makes a post, she only reaches about between 500 to about 1,000 people per given post, unless she pays Facebook to reach out more people. And there's different tiers of ways that she can pay. And it's just, you know, it's crazy. Just They control how much that they allow people to see. And that's what, you know, she's been saying that she's slowly going to get off Facebook and go on Twitter and Instagram where there's no such, you know, they, if she posts something, people will see it. There's no, you know, pain or bribing someone to make them see. So it's just, it's despicable how these larger companies have so much control and control what you are seeing. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I need to – I'm looking at these people who voted for this, and i got to see if this is accurate. Oh, my goodness, it is accurate. Holy cow. Okay, I come from District 13 in the state of Georgia. It is – the district lines in the state of Georgia were primarily drawn specifically for these district demographics. And when I say that, I mean ours is heavily, heavily African-American influenced. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's it's very biased. I'll say that. Um, it is run by a man who, a congressman who has been in office for a long time now. He's a Democrat. He's horrendous. And I'll tell you, though, I give this man credit because this is not the first time he's done it either, but all of the nay votes, the 92, all of them but one were Democrats. And even though Mr. David Scott is a Democrat and controls my district, this is the second time that this man has voted yes on the audit the Fed bill. Wow. I'm very impressed with him for this reason. The first time we kept calling and kept, we said, you know, we'd really appreciate it if he would vote yes on the audit the, on the, audit the Fed bill. Some of our friends were like, oh, yeah, right. That man is never going to vote for this because this is what the people want. They had no faith in him. So imagine the next day when our eyes like practically rolled back in our heads because he had voted on it. And most of my people were going, oh, I'll be damned. He did something right for once. We didn't call this time. We didn't make the phone call and tell him to vote on this bill. That means he did it on his own accord. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge deal, but I mean, we know that the opposition that we run up against this time is going to be Senator Harry Reid, a despicable piece of work from Nevada. Yes, yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm aware of what he has done and just, I know for sure, I agree with you, he is going to be voting against it. 
Well, here's some background information on Audit the Fed. Ron Paul said this in the press release first. He said, I am pleased to see the House of Representatives once again pass this historic legislation, Ron Paul said in the release. The support Audit the Fed has received over the past few years has been tremendous. I urge Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to listen to the American people and hold a vote on Audit the Fed right away. Now, here's some background information on Audit the Fed. And before I get into this, I do want to say this. Yes, my political views have changed drastically over the past few months. I mean, it's the it's the company I'm keeping. It is the friends that I'm surrounding myself with. I consider myself now a voluntarist. I think that is the way to go. No matter who tells me, oh, it's never going to work. You know what? We haven't even tried it, and the system that we have now certainly is not working. Mm-mm. So I'm really sick of people telling me, oh, that's never going to work. Well, you know what? Your system is not working, so let's talk. Um, but this is different in the aspect that this is not just a typical bill. This bill is for definitely something good in the United States. We need to see what the Federal Reserve is doing. We need to know what the Federal Reserve is doing. And government, I think, was put into place for the very reason that Ron Paul is using it for this bill. If somebody is using government to pass things to benefit them, yeah, that's the wrong way to to use government. That's the wrong intention to use it. But I think Ron Paul, even no matter how much I am against the government now, this is the right way to do it. He's doing something for the benefit and the good of all the people. So this is the right way to use government. I agree. And there's, you know, the government forces so many companies to be open about their, you know, their stakes, their revenue. I mean, look at some of the, look at some of the larger businesses such as, you know, City, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. They're, you know, they're meant to be held accountable to the public Um, places, you know, even retail places such as Sephora. You can look up, you know, all of their stocks, all of their um, revenues and such. Where is that from the Fed? Hmm? Well, here's the history on the Federal Reserve. What people don't understand is that the Federal Reserve is not a government entity. The reason people think it is is because they cleverly put the word federal in their title. It's a private organization, people. It's a private banking organization that controls the entire economy of the United States. It's a very dangerous organization. But the thing is, people don't understand. There is some government interaction, just some. The president chooses the board of directors for the Federal Reserve, and when he does that, he also sets their pay rates. That is the only only connection that the government has to the Federal Reserve. They basically signed a long-term, talking like no, no term limit, contract with these people to control the economy. It's, it was a central banking system. It's extremely dangerous. So – it's very important to know what they're doing. And I think what it was a few years ago, I don't remember how long ago, um, they got a bill passed to audit, do, do a what, a one-fourth audit, was it? They audited one-fourth of the, of the Federal Reserve, and um, they, they found out that we were sending a lot of our business overseas. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's really, really, really important for this to happen now. To the background information I keep promising. It says, Ron Paul's audit the Fed bill, H.R. 459, gained 274 co-sponsors and passed the House of Representatives in the 112th Congress on July 25, 2012, by an overwhelming three-fourths majority of 327 to 98, after a nationwide grassroots mobilization effort led by Campaign for Liberty. The legislation calls for a full audit of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and the Federal Reserve Banks by the Comptroller General of the United States. Okay, so that one, that was about when he was in the process of running for president. That was July 2012. Last Congress, Senator Rand Paul introduced companion legislation S202, which gained 37 co-sponsors. And those of you who are like, that's just 37 co-sponsors. Please remember that the Senate only has two people per state. That's 100 people. So 37 of those 100, rather than members of um, the House, which how many how many people does the House have total? Do you remember off the top of your head? Oh, I 
house total. I'm cheating and I'm Googling it. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. That's fine. I should know this. I'm a teacher. Uh, house total in U.S. It's like yeah. four, 495 or something like that. I, I'm probably going to like these uh, to, house total. No, house of uh, house of four, uh, 400 something five. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, there's 435 voting members, six non-voting. There we go, 435. Yes, you sure. have it there, folks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, it, says, it says Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid refused to allow audit the Fed to be brought to the floor for a vote, despite repeatedly calling for an audit of the Federal Reserve throughout his career. Yeah, he switched sides because he's bought and paid for. Um, and then this this one's important to me. Because I actually worked for this man's campaign. Congressman Paul Brown, who is a Republican from Georgia, reintroduced Dr. Paul's audit, the Fed bill, in January 2013 as H.R. 24, the Federal Reserve Transparency Act of 2013 in the 113th Congress. The bill, which was co-sponsored by 224 representatives, passed the House of Representatives on September 17, 2014, by a vote of 333 to 92. Senator Rand Paul has again introduced companion legislation, S-209, which currently has 30 co-sponsors. So this is very important to me because one of or two of the main reasons that I stood behind Congressman Paul Brown, he was running for Senate. For the state of Georgia, um, Johnny Isaacson, or is it Saxby Shambliss? Saxby Shambliss is going to be retiring this year. He will not seek re-election. So that is a major seat because the Democrats are vying for that seat. So the Republicans are trying to keep a hold on it. Not that the party matters and that people aren't realizing that the party doesn't matter, but uh, I did work for his uh, for his uh, campaign the word I'm looking for. And he was actually endorsed by Ron Paul. So the I could I could safely stand behind him for that. It is not that often that Dr. Paul throws his endorsement behind anybody. It's very true and you know Dr. Paul uh, you know is you know we all know that he just he has had very huge stands on things and very rarely does he actually prove it. I mean, he and his son are like night and day, too. So him throwing out his support, that's huge. It is. It's really huge. And to hear that um, Dr. Brown was the co-sponsor, or he was the sponsor of this bill, one of the sponsors, uh, and it actually passed, that this is a good thing for him. This is one of his last hurrahs because uh, he can't run for office again. Not this mm-hmm. time, because he was running for the Senate, and you know when his term's up this time, his term is up. So this is a big deal for him to close out his term, and I hope he runs again. I hope he does. I, I liked the man. He put too much. I think he put too much religion into his fight. But that's any person who believes strongly in their beliefs. They're going to live them. You know. So as much as I think it was not a good fit, and I think it turns some people off, he's just living the life that he lives. Absolutely. And you were talking about Ron and Rand. Now, let me say this. I met a band in person a few weeks ago. Their name is Love and Theft. They are an upcoming country band. They're, they're gaining popularity as we speak. They came to Atlanta, and one of the things actually that made me want to go talk to them and see them is the fact that my friend showed me a clip of them being interviewed by a radio station in Texas, and they said, oh, you know, are you Obama fans? And one of the guys in the band said, "Um, you know, I'm not going to answer that question. But the other guy next to him said, and let's just say I'm not an Obama supporter. Uh, But, and he held up his arm. He's wearing a Ron Paul bracelet. Uh, And he goes, Ron Paul for life. I knew after that I needed to meet these guys. So I wore my Ron Paul bracelets to to the concert and I met them afterwards. And I said, hey guys, look. I saw a video in Texas, and they're like, right on. And I said, yeah, I was elected as a delegate alternate to Tampa for the state of Georgia, and we tried our best. He goes, thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much. And I was like, dude, we tried. We tried so hard. He goes, that's why there's his son. And I was like, yep, that's why there's his son. I don't believe that at all. His son 
I don't know his son's intentions. Everybody says, just wait till he gets into the White House. You'll see his intentions, his real intentions. And I'm like, I haven't seen anything out of him worth voting for. You know, the only thing that I um, really know, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I know Rand has definitely very different um, stances from his father um, as far as I believe I want to say immigration was different and then um, war, I believe, was different. But one thing he did that I thought was very interesting is that he voted against um, food companies having to label their foods as GMO. And a lot of people were just saying, oh, no, you know, they should label GMO. They, they, all foods should be forced by the government to do so. And I was just like, well, first of all, why are you going to be trusting the government to tell you what is safe to eat and what's not to eat? I mean, they tell you that marijuana is not safe to use, but, you know, have we had any sort of ill effects from marijuana? They tell you that alcohol is okay to use, but, you know, alcohol kills way more people than marijuana ever does. So, first of all, why are you trusting the government to tell you to eat and such? And secondly, I don't believe the government should force them to label the foods GMO or anything. Companies are already doing that because they want their customers to say, hey, we don't believe in having GMOs on our food. You should come purchase here. Whole Foods is that way. Whole Foods refuses to stock any sort of GMO food. And by companies taking the responsibility to be responsible for their customers, because if a customer goes into, say, like Albertsons or Shaw's or um, Turkey Hill or something, do you have, do you have, um, do you sell foods that have GMOs? They'll be like, well, yes. They're like, okay, well, we're not going to shop there. Then that store would have an incentive that if they wanted to retain that customer, to start stocking more G- more non-GMO food. I just I don't trust I don't trust I don't I don't trust Rand at all. Um, he he's so wishy-washy. I mean, people got really excited with his filibuster just so they could get proof from Eric Holder or the Defense Department that yes. You know, it, they they do kill Americans on American soil, and that it, it is unconstitutional. He got his letter, and we were all like, "Yeah, yeah, this is awesome." But then somebody asked me, "Why is this a big deal?" So what? He got an answer. So what? Why is this a big deal? They're right. Why is it wasn't a big deal? He's that's that's a big waste of time, is what it was. What are you trying to accomplish? You know, and he's acting so much like establishment that it makes me wonder what. He really is. You know, you don't come from the son of such an amazing liberty man and not have some of that liberty rub off on you. But what is he doing? Yeah, I um, like I said, he is very, very, very different from his father. So I, you know, some people, you know, you know, let's, you know, give them special button and say, oh, honey. But I think a lot of people at first, at least, you say, oh, He's just like his dad. It's like, no, no, he's not. He definitely has some very opposing views and very, very strong opposing views, too. Well, the thing is, as somebody else said, if you pay attention to his voting record, he only votes yes on the bills that probably will not go anywhere. They said they throw he throws a few wayward votes in the direction of the establishment just to appease them. But I don't know. Sanctions in, a, in Iran, that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know where he's going in with that. I mean, I, you know, I believe just like what, you know, Dr. Paul is saying, you know, we need to stay out of other countries' business. Let's, you know, leave them to their own thing. And sanctions in Iran, I, I don't know. Well, I do have to say this on a, on a lighter note. Um, my liberty friend was hiking in the, I guess the mountains and took a picture of a mushroom and he said anyone know what this is called and his friend said mushroom a mushroom a red mushroom a mushroom you do not want to eat a mushroom aren't you so glad that your friends are helpful oh that's not that's nothing compared to what I saw um so this girl in New Zealand found a um she found a transit card and like um it was nothing that identified like who it was it was a transit card and I believe some sort of ATM card, or you know, they were both like very flat, no names, whatever. So she posts, she makes a public post on Facebook, and she says, "Has anyone seen these? Did anyone lose these? Please message me." And then her friends, one of her friends, starts by saying, "Nope, I have mine." And he took a picture of his own ATM card and transit card, saying, "Nope, got mine." But he, the thing, uh, how he took a picture is that he took a picture of his hand holding up the cards 
with her picture posted on her Facebook in the background. And then another friend did the same where they took their picture of their hand holding their cards in front of that post. And then someone else took a picture of that picture and then picture and just went on and on until there's this never ending train of like these near images of people holding up cards. And it was just, it was so funny to watch it. Just be like, that's why you don't really ask for help on the internet. <laughs> it was oh, that's ridiculous. Hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh, such smart asses on the internet. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. So we've, we've talked about Rand, we've, we've talked about Ron and now I can pose my actual question. I was talking to somebody on the phone this afternoon and we were talking about how there, he said he is a constitutional Republican and I was like, that's fine. You know, I respect your views, but honestly, and with respect, I consider myself a voluntarist. I said, I, I did the politics thing. I've worked in the Republican Party, and honestly, I'm finding it to be a huge waste of time. Um, it's accomplishing nothing, absolutely nothing. I said, but here is where here is where my hardship lies. I was like, my conflict is a lot of the people in the voluntarist movement say that the Constitution is just a piece of paper written by man, and what control should a constitution have over our lives just because it was written a long time ago and people say, hey, you know, this is the constitution. A lot of people are saying the only, the only people who make rules or the only person who makes rules that should guide my life or run my life is God. You know, I know that um, John Moreland, the regular host who you've been filling in for infinitely right now, um, he says that. He's like, I don't think I should listen to, to anybody, but only one who should have any control over my life. And that's coming from a guy who considers himself, I think he considers himself an atheist or, or agnostic. He might be an agnostic, but either way, he doesn't have a firm belief in a God. So even he says the Constitution is just a piece of paper. Why should we have to follow a piece of paper that was written years ago by men we've never met? But if we all believe in that, and and I'm not sure knowing that and feeling that, I'm not I'm not sure how to feel about the Constitution now. But if that's the case, that means that the man in office right now, which would be Mr. Barack Obama, him overriding the Constitution means that he's doing nothing wrong. If you don't believe in the Constitution anyway, doesn't it? That's a good. That's certainly a good point about um, if you're not. So you're not you're not believing you don't stand for anything that the Constitution says, and if Barack, so Barack Obama is overriding the Constitution, if you don't believe it, certainly you know why would you have an issue with Barack Obama? The problem with Barack Obama is that he's overriding it and trying to implement policies that interfere with your freedom, with your ability to have a liberty life. Now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean that I'm a all oh, sure, yeah. a new Barack Obama supporter. I can't stand. No, it. yeah. I mean, but you pose a, a great question that I don't think a lot of people understand, and it's just like, yeah, you know, that's definitely food for thought. You know, if you think about it, you don't believe in the Constitution. You don't, you know, you didn't sign it. You weren't there when it was, and you know, you never met the men. So, you know, why would you have a problem with Barack Obama overriding it? Oh, because he's implementing things that, you know, har- you know that are going to halter your freedom and your ability to live, you know, a liberty-oriented life. That's why you should be concerned. Well, then, speaking in voluntarist terms, he is he is violating the non-aggression principle. Certainly. So that's why, from a voluntarist perspective, why we don't like the man, because he is irritating my life, and he's trying to intrude upon my life, and he's trying to intrude upon yours and anybody else's. Therefore, he's violating the non-aggression principle. So that's why. If you were wondering, but it still poses an interesting question. If you don't consider yourself a voluntarist and you're not in the fight for liberty or freedom and you don't believe in the Constitution, then what beef do you have with this man for overriding the Constitution when you don't believe in it anyway? Let's take, for example, I know this has been, you know, probably beat up on many, many times, but in healthcare. You know the whole Obamacare thing has just gotten everyone in a tizzy, and, and I know it. I know it has for me. Um, first of all, you know, being a voluntarist, you're not volunteering for national health care. You don't want you. You know, whatever in your life, you don't feel that you need it. You have everything that you need. You have a health savings account or whatnot, but you're not volunteering for this. 
this is violating your liberty because you're forced to have to pay for it. Um, for example, when I um, so I just started this job. Now, this job that I have, um, it, there's a period of 90 days before I can select benefits. Totally understandable. Um, but when I'm looking over at the bill at the um, at the benefits, it would cost me about $140 a month for coverage for myself. Now, if I elected to um, have my partner covered as well, because my uh, my partner doesn't have health insurance, it would cost it would cost me a little over three hundred dollars a month to cover him. Now, you know, if you think about it, you know, I realize that you know you never know what could happen. You know, certainly one of us could have um, could be in a very devastating, healthy um, could go from being pretty healthy to having something very very bad happen. Um, I totally get that that's the, that that's the case. But the problem with having Obamacare forced upon us is that it's certainly it's way increased our insurance premiums. My previous job before um, before Obamacare came into effect, I and it was just myself. I paid maybe I want to say seventy or eighty dollars a month, and that was just the very basic healthcare um, thing. You know, it was it was it was the highest deductible. But I got you know it was beneficial to me because I got a matched pre-tax amount debited into a health savings account that I could use for uh, medication. Uh, many times I would use it for birth control. I could take it to a pharmacy. I could buy health-related things with it. Um, and you know I can see certainly like having a um, less deductible if, say for example, if you're battling conditions such as cancer or you have a child that is you know, let's face it, kids get sick. Um, you have a condition that does require frequent hospital visits. I can understand that, but for you know people such as myself that understand that, you know we really don't need to talk. I I don't want it. I will go and I will pay for it when the time comes. Hospitals have payment plans, and what's you know in my situation currently, I have a clinic that I can go visit to. Um, at work, I certainly, you know, I do have to visit the clinic um, when I am not working, so I do have to schedule my appointments. But the appointments do go fairly late in the evening, so I definitely have time to go in uh, before or after work. And for the most part, it is free to me if there are medications that are required. Uh, certainly, I certainly have to pay for them or anything extra. But I am able to use that clinic to take my partner or whoever else I need to to go see it. So anything that I would need that would be medically needed, I could probably get at that clinic. You know, obviously I'm going to look to have vision and um, and dental because those are very minimal and I need those. But with that clinic, I really do not see the need for health insurance. And, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen at tax time um, when they're going to say, oh, you didn't have health insurance, here's your fine. It's just like it's unconstitutional to force me to do it. And I had adequate coverage being at the clinic. So, no, I refuse to pay it. But only time will tell. Well, I will say this. I do have health care now, and it is through the school district. So school district health care is pretty good, and it doesn't fall under the same parameters of the requirements of Obamacare because of the fact that it's such a large organization. Um, so it, it's not that bad. I'm not paying that much per month for my insurance. I'm okay with that. Um, there's nothing more exciting than getting a letter in the mail saying, welcome to the retirement system. Oh, my gosh. You know, all these little things that people, some don't care about, and usually it doesn't matter, but it's so important. I mean, I don't go to the doctor, but now I can. But, you know, I'm paying for my insurance, and that's okay. I don't need free health care. I am happy just to be able to say I have this job and I am paying for my insurance. But that's the thing that's, that's so misleading is that we have, quote, unquote, health care now, but, the, but we're paying, you know, easily twice or three times as much as we normally pay, we still have to pay to go see the doctor. Typical doctor visit is going to run you roughly about $100, at least for the first visit. Also that he can prescribe you you ibuprofen for your cough. Like, you know, it's like if I were paying $140 and I actually did not have to pay any amount to go see it, sure, you know, that might be one thing. But, no, I'm still having to pay to, you know, have myself looked at. And that, I think, is just, it's so misleading. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. I mean, we've got the copay. We've got a copay, and I have the coverage. It's okay to have the coverage. I am just glad to say that I have it. Because here's here's my reasoning. I have a good paying job. I have a better paying job, I should say. I can't say how fantastic it is, but I have a better paying job. And 
can now, even with insurance, I'm paying out insurance. The, the fact that before when I didn't have insurance, I couldn't even afford to pay just a regular doctor visit. Mm-hmm. Now, at least I can say it is getting taken out of my paycheck, but damn it, I have the money to be taken out of my paycheck and still have some left over. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I just, that's why I don't understand what if someone is unemployed or something, you know, what kind, you know, are they still going to have to find some way to afford help? Like, I looked at regular health insurance because, of, you know, for a short while um, I did have, um, I was unemployed and I was going through some uh, some medical issues that I was like, well, maybe it might be worth it to get medical coverage until I do find a job to have myself looked at. And the cheapest that I found was roughly about two hundred and fifty dollars a month. And just you know, you know, that you know was not you know that was just private, normal um, health insurance for just one person. Like it's just, it's crazy to, to expect that people that they think people can afford that. It's true. It's true. And I tell you, uh, not to not to burst your bubble or cut the subject, but I just I came across another startling article. Um, this is from the IJ Review. And it says, apparently, did you hear about those girls from Austria who ran away from home at the age of 16 and 14 to join ISIS? No, I did not. Okay, so apparently the teenage jihadist poster girls who left their parents to join ISIS, uh, it says, while most teenage girls were interested in the iPhone 6 or the Gilmore Girls going on to Netflix, Austrian teenagers... 16-year-old Samar Kasanovic and 14-year-old Sabina Solomovic dreamed of joining the jihad in Syria. Now one of them is believed to be dead. Oh, what a shocker. Wow, what happened? It says, the dark reminder of what happens when people believe they can play with jihadi fire comes to us via the Daily Mail. Okay, so this is from the Daily Mail, which that is where a lot of Americans turn for their news these days uh, because the news outlets in America suck. And the Daily Mail, shoot, you go over to news outlets from overseas and you'll find out about stuff happening in your backyard that the U.S. refuses to cover. So the Daily Mail is one of those trust trustworthy sites. They're from the UK. It says one of two Austrian teenage poster girls who flew to Syria in April to join Islamic State ranks is believed to have been killed. It is not yet known which one of the teenagers has been killed as the death is yet to be officially confirmed by the Austrian government. Both Samra and Sasha disappeared nearly a year ago and posted pictures of themselves online with the Kalashnikov automatic weapons. I think I said that Correctly, Kalashnikov, yeah. Automatic weapons surrounded by ISIS fighters. The girls are believed to have been recruited by ISIS to become the poster girls of the of the Islamic State. Fourteen oh year fourteen year old Sabina is pictured below, surrounded by terrorists in black masks, and it is indeed a teenage girl with a black mask on. And it says it is safe to say that life expectancy for poster girls for ISIS is not a particularly long one. The Daily Mail reports. Alexander Marakovic, spokesperson for the Interior Ministry, told the Salzburger News, we also have this information and have checked it but cannot say with absolute certainty that it is true. But the parents have been informed their daughter could be dead. It is heartbreaking that these girls would seek flight into the arms of a brutal, murderous group like ISIS. These girls' developing story serves as a warning to those who believe there's anything glamorous about becoming spokesmodels for a terrorist organization that routinely beheads infidels, kills children, and slaughters women. If there's any sense left in these girls' minds, they will flee the evil men they are serving immediately. Oh, my God. The first thing I have to say is, what in the hell crawled into their brains to make them dream of being terrorists? Wow. I just, I'm, what could it, what could persuade girls to want to run away to join a place that just demoralizes and lessens women to the, even less than that of animals. Like everyone knows that women over in the Middle East, you know, most of the Middle East, but I'm not going to say all because I know Israel, for example, uh, their women are, you know, are valued just as what men are. But, you know, women in Islamic countries are no more valuable than that of cattle or, you know, goats even. What is this? Who, seriously, who grows up or who even gets in their head, hey, 
I want to be a terrorist. I'm going to join ISIS. How do teenagers, how did they flee from Austria, and how did they get all the way to Syria in the Middle East? Who does this? I mean, I can think of ways that they probably got around. I mean, they probably hitchhiked. They probably had money. They, you know, they, they probably found some way of getting around. Um, not obviously, of course, without some sort of either sexual abuse or sexual payment going through it. Because let's, you know, let's face it, you know, teenagers you know, are extremely naive when it comes to the other world and may just have used that. But, you know, think about the girls that, you know, stabbed their friends to try and appease Slenderman. I mean, just so much crap gets into these kids' minds. And you're just like, what are you doing? But who does this? This is not an issue of, hey, I'm going to run away from home with my boyfriend and we're going to get married and, and we're going to just, we're going to elope. We're we're gonna go and we're just we're gonna run away together. This is this is joining a terrorist organization. Again, I ask, who does this? Yeah, it's it's pretty mind boggling. I I mean I, I'm stumped. I am completely, completely stumped. I am sorry. I am so sorry to the parents if they lost their daughter because their daughter's an idiot. I am so sorry, parents. But your daughter's an idiot, and there's there's nothing, nothing, nothing to say. There's nothing to say. No, there's not. I I'm just I'm shocked. I am so shocked. Uh, it's like you know, you watch TV one day, or maybe you just wake up in the morning and say, "Hey, I'm going to join a terrorist organization." No, I'm sure they were probably just looking at the over glorified videos of it and just thinking, "Hey, I can change the world. I can." This is this is so cool. Yeah, but who watches a video of a beheading and says that's awesome? <sighs> have you have you? Uh, are I know there's been some some people are saying that the beheadings are um like they're not don't I haven't seen the videos myself. I don't know if you have either, but I've tried. Don't they, don't they say that the be, what happens in beheadings is that it fades out before they actually get through it? So they may not actually be beheaded, or are they in fact beheaded? No, it, it fades out. You can't see it. And then when it comes back, you don't see anything. There's one they showed some guy's legs just laying there on the ground. But, yeah, no, there's no there's no picture. You can't see it. Now, in the past, I have seen people be beheaded. I have watched the videos and how horrifying it was. For some reason, Americans, no, excuse me, humanity has a morbid fascination with watching the the most horrible things that they can watch. Absolutely. Nobody knows what kind of an effect it really has on people because I'm telling you, people claim video games cause kids to go out and be violent. But I've watched a few beheading videos. It doesn't make me want to go out and be violent. I haven't wanted to do any of that. It's kind of like those kids that are playing Quake, you know, it makes them want to shoot people. No, it does not. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I, I saw some kid play Minecraft, and now I just want to go out and build square buildings and shoot fiery um, arrows at pigs. Yeah, I've been there playing Kingdom Hearts 1.5, and I, I have to tell you, I want to like buy a crap down of hair gel and spike my hair, and I also want to craft my own keyblade and start whacking people in the face with it. Wouldn't that be awesome? Amazing. Just totally amazing. Yeah, I was, uh, my friend's daughter was playing Minecraft, and I had never played it before. I'd never seen it. I was very surprised at how 80s graphics it looked. It it looks a lot like 16-bit video games. Are you talking about Minecraft, or what are you talking about? Yeah, Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft is, like, so awesome. But, and the, the thing is, is that the, the 16-bit, 8-bit graphics like really started to annoy me so i started looking for texture packs and what they do is that they make it look more like you know a comic book feature or and it's just it's so much better like i just i can't look at minecraft the same way i'm like why don't you people use texture packs they're so much better are you playing on a pc yes well i think the reason that she didn't is that she was playing on an xbox oh i yeah i don't know if they have i they might have texture packs for xbox on the but I don't have an Xbox, so I'm not sure how that works. But I would hope that she would have some sort of texture pack. Well, the little Maybe girl, the little girl didn't care. She's in second grade this year. She's in second of course, grade. Of course, she's yeah. like seven. But I, I had never seen this before. I'm watching this going, this is utterly unfascinating. I can't believe that the kids like this game. And I'm watching her, and I'm like, hey, go kill your guy. She's like, no. Why am I going <laughs> to kill him? I was like, 
go kill him. Go do it. She goes, you want to see him run through lava? I say, is he going to die? No. Then no, I don't want to see him run through lava. So she goes and she goes, fine, I'll kill him. And she killed him. I was like, you're such a bad human being. You told me to. I don't care. You killed your guy. So then he comes back to life, whatever it does. And he, she goes out in the yard. She goes, I'm going to get a pet. So she gets a wolf. And I'm just like, that pig over there, kill him. Get a bow and arrow, the fiery one, and, and kill him. She's like, okay. I was like, bacon. I was like, you just killed that pig. She goes, you told me to. I was like, you're a horrible human being. This went on for like five minutes. She kept killing everything, and I kept calling her a horrible human being. And then she went in and played the music on that box thing, and I'm just like, Lord Almighty. I said, that's a horrible song. She goes, fine, I'll play another. I was like, no, no, it's all horrible. Go go play in your little square castle, and just I'll leave you alone now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was it was hilarious. It was just hilarious, though. So. Um, yeah, my experiences with Minecraft, uh, very interesting. Never played it myself, so yeah. I, you know, actually, it's funny that you bring that up. You know, concerning your, you know, talk about women and video games. I actually had a, um, I don't know, you know, if I'll be able to get into both of them, but they kind of coincide with each other. I actually do um, have a couple things I wanted to bring up about women and video games, and some of them are um, very interesting. Also, some violent, but very interesting. Here's my question. Do we happen to know if the New York Post, the New York Daily News, are those are those um, real sites? Are, you know, are they, are they, they're not satire, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, um, like, the, like, New York, like New York Times? Uh, no, this one's the New York Post, and the other one is um, the New York Daily News. Are those legit? I, I would imagine so. I hadn't heard anything of them not being legit. Okay, well, here. European teens who joined ISIS claim to be pregnant. Oh, that's an interesting turn of events. So the ones who believe to be dead, they aren't dead. They're now believed to be pregnant. Well, they you know, when they say they're dead, it could be that their Austrian selves are dead. But their Islamic Isis Isis uh, Isis, not Isaac, Isis, Isis sides are very well in life and, you know, pregnant. This says here rumors that one of the two Viennese girls excuse me, teenagers who fled Austria to fight in the Holy War in Syria is dead are thought to be untrue and actually both are pregnant. The claims that the girls were both alive and pregnant were made on social media accounts, including WhatsApp and Facebook, which were allegedly owned and being operated by Samara Kesanovic, 16, and her friend Sabina Selimovic, 15. But Austrian officials warned that it is unlikely either of the girls has been allowed to access uh, has been allowed access to social media now that they're in Syria and say it is probably much more likely that the men who now control their lives are running the accounts and simply claiming to be them, which I could see that legitimately. Oh, the, absolutely. The pair vanished earlier this year from their homes in the Austrian capital, Vienna, shortly before images were posted on their accounts of themselves, branding Kalashnikov rifles and in some cases surrounded by armed men. Don't look for us. We will serve Allah and we will die for him, were their parting words to their parents in a letter left behind in their bedrooms. Both are reported to have married Chechen fighters, and it was also revealed that the girls' flight from their families in Vienna to Syria had inspired other girls to do the same. Oh my Austri- gosh. Austrian police, who have been hunting the two together with Interpol, said that there had been several copycat incidents in which young girls had been stopped at the border in Austria attempting to leave. Oh, my God. And although yesterday it was reported that Samra had been killed in fighting, today it was revealed that somebody filing from an anonymous WhatsApp account and claiming to be Samra contacted some of the girl's friends in Austria and said that the rumors of her death were not true. Good Lord. I'm going to finish up this article. Social media accounts, including the WhatsApp account, claiming to represent the two girls, said that both of them were well and also gave them new names that suggested they were both pregnant as they featured the Arabic word for mother. However, Austrian police cautioned cautioned that it is likely both accounts were being used instead by men who were using the teenagers to promote the cause and recruit other youngsters from the West to fight in the Holy War. Okay, they, they are not from the West, first of all. Isn't Austria from the east? Yeah, Austria is Eastern Eastern European. 
Right. And it says a police spokesman said we have no independent confirmation that either of them are dead or alive or that either of them are pregnant, although we suspect both are married. At the moment, investigations are ongoing. He added that the parents of Samra had been warned that there was a possibility their daughter had been killed and that they were still investigating the suspicion. The Austrian government, meanwhile, confirmed that it is working hard to tackle an increasing problem with its residents traveling to conflict zones to participate in holy war or jihad. On Monday, they announced a series of measures to restrict the banned ISIS organization, as well as proposals to withdraw citizenship or asylum status from returned fighters. In addition, an organization has been established in Vienna to de-radicalize young Muslims who may have been influenced by jihadist views. Wow. I'm just, I'm so blown away. Just like, who would, I just don't understand how they could just leave a fairly good life in Austria just in, and go. Just, my heart is breaking for their parents. I am seriously, seriously concerned for all these teenagers. Now, I will tell you, on that note, we're going to go to a commercial break. I do have Liberty Phoenix on standby. We're going to pull him in right after the commercial break. So let me get a long enough commercial to do this where we don't hide anything here on on the show. And I am looking for a commercial long enough to bring you guys, uh, to bring him in so we can play this and and do what we got to do. So please enjoy this boycott of corn commercial and we'll be right back. Yay. I'm Angie Morelli and I'm with CMO Free Vegas. So what are we going to do about this now? Well, to begin with, we advocate the labeling of genetically engineered food or foods with GMOs. Regardless of how you feel about the GMO issue, we can agree that we should at least have a choice of being informed about what we put into our bodies. We won't have a choice until these foods are properly labeled. We must remember who we are fighting in this battle. We are fighting corporations selling us poison, backed by corporations making us poison. And these corporations will only respond to one kind of vote the vote that we make with our dollars. Recently, YoPlay faced so much criticism over high fructose corn syrup that they removed it from all of their yogurts. Right before and after the march against Monsanto in May, we saw major corporations like Whole Foods, Target, and Chipotle make major announcements about deciding to label and or phase out GMOs. This is happening because of us, because we will solve this as making demands as consumers first. Starting right now, we're gonna boycott corn. This is all you have to do, is don't buy corn. Corn on the cob, corn in a can, corn in a mix at a restaurant, any visible kernels of corn. All we are asking for people to do right now is to boycott corn. This is gonna be a clear, completely simple message that will definitely get back to its makers. We won't stand for poison. We won't stand for cronyism. And that is why we march against Monsanto. Globe Sound and Consciousness Institute presents the Globe Sound Healing Conference with the full spectrum of the most well-known and respected pioneers, researchers, therapists, doctors, and musicians in the field. The conference will focus on acoustic instruments, sound and medicine, new sound technologies, sacred geometry, and raising consciousness with sound. The conference is being held September 26th to the 29th in the San Francisco Bay Area. Call 415-777-2486 or go to globesoundhealingconference.com. That's globesoundhealingconference.com. Good evening. Ancient of Days returns to freedomizerradio.com. Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern for 90 minutes of adventures in history, ancient and modern, plus current events here on freedomizerradio.com. See you there, Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. I'm not a lab rat. My family is not a bunch of lab rats. I am not a lab rat. 
Thanks, Spinifex. 80% of the processed food in America has been genetically modified. That's GMOs. That's GMOs. You can't even tell what foods contain GMOs at the grocery store. Because no GMO food labels are required. That makes us the guinea pigs. Hmm, sounds like an experiment to me. GMOs are scary. It's up to you. You're an adult. You can vote. I can't vote because I'm a kid. Vote yes. Vote yes. Please vote yes. Can't a cookie? Freedomizers, you have a voice. How will you vote? when initiatives are added to the ballot in your state. I'm Angie Morelli, and I'm with GMO Free Vegas. So what are we going to do about this now? Well, to begin with, we advocate the labeling of genetically engineered food, or foods with GMOs. Regardless of how you feel about the GMO issue, we can agree that we should at least have a choice of being informed about what we put into our bodies. We won't have a choice until these foods are properly labeled. We must remember who we are fighting in this battle. We are fighting corporations selling us poison, backed by corporations making us poison. And these corporations will only respond to one kind of vote, the vote that we make with our dollars. Recently, Yoplait faced so much criticism over high fructose corn syrup that they removed it from all of their yogurts. Right before and after the march against Monsanto in May, we saw major corporations like Whole Foods, Target, and Chipotle make major announcements about deciding to label and or phase out GMOs. This is happening because of us, because we will solve this as making demands as consumers first. Starting right now, we're going to boycott corn. This is all you have to do, is don't buy corn. Corn on the cob, corn in a can, corn in a mix at a restaurant, any visible kernels of corn. All we are asking for people to do right now is to boycott corn. This is going to be a clear, completely simple message that will definitely get back to its makers. We won't stand for poison. We won't stand for cronyism. And that is why we march against Monsanto. U.S. trade negotiators are pushing to complete the TPP this year. They're trying to keep it under the radar. The best way to stop the TPP is to drag it into the light of day. Right now, negotiators have appointed approximately 600 corporate lobbyists to serve as cleared advisors on the TPP while refusing to release... Wait a minute. Actually, I'm giving you like Wait a minute. I'm going to run to the bathroom. Review. It let us in. The corporate media is oh. unlikely to inform the public about the Wait TPP. Second. We need to do okay. it ourselves. Shh. You are listening to... Freedomizer Radio, where Freedomizers Freedomize Freedom. Hello, everyone. Proof is here. I want to let you know about our latest promotion on our FreedomizerRadio.com website. Check our it out. chat client, Bark, B-A-R-C dot com, is hosting a micro-Bitcoin giveaway while supplies last. All you have to do is go to FreedomizerRadio.com, join our chat room, create a screen name, and type to your friends. And... Some micro bitcoins will fall from the sky. Not only that, the more people that are typing, there will be some random lotteries as well. So, just for typing to your friends, you can earn some micro bitcoins. So, who knows how long this will last? But join us now, freedomizerradio.com. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> It's about 20 minutes left in the show. We did just pull Liberty Phoenix in with us. I'm so glad you're able to join us. And Danica is taking a momentary break. I think it's bathroom time for Danica. Um, but we do have you on. Welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Oh, I'm so glad. And I am to back you. from said bathroom break. She took a bathroom break. Right here on the PM show, we are blunt, and she was in the bathroom. Oh, the powder room. Come on. Jeez. Powder room, nothing. Yeah, who, yeah, who show. goes to the powder room? <laughs> uh, well, if you're in the South, my dear, everybody goes to the powder room. Oh, well, in Canada, they call it the washroom, which is a little bit more, you know, typical other than bathroom because not all, like, rooms that have toilets and stuff have baths. I call yeah. it the restroom. Are you really resting while you're taking a dump? Um, Some people call it that. Oh, okay. 
I, well, I do have to say this. He wants uh, he wants to, I should say, uh, Ken the Liberty Phoenix wants to jump in with what we talked about earlier concerning uh, Ron Paul's and audit the Fed bill. But I do want to cover this really quickly, that the USDA is going to allow chickens from the U.S. to be shipped to China for processing and then shipped back to us for consumption, just like seafood. That sounds Yummy. delicious. It is the Chinese way. Okay, now seriously, the standards of cleanliness and food standards out in China are deplorable. They tell us not to eat fish from China because their sewage problems and their health issues are deplorable when it comes to conditions of where you get your food. I know that when you go to get honey in the United States, they encourage you to get your honey from a locally grown source because the stuff that they sell as honey in the U.S. is indeed no longer honey after all the processing it goes through. And most of it comes from China, and most of it is nothing but a sticky, sweet substance with a lot of sugar. Delicious. So, everybody, be careful with the chicken that you purchase. Unless it says grown and processed and dealt with in the United States, I wouldn't touch it if I were you. So chicken, fish, um, you know, unless you like the occasional fish with a side of cancer, yum. Well, that's all I have to say for that. So anyway, like I said, Ken the Liberty Phoenix is joining us for the last segment of the show, and he says he has some stuff he wants to talk about with the audit the Fed bill that was passed just earlier today. So take it away, sir. Well, it wasn't passed today. It was passed on the 16th, so it would have been yesterday. Um, but it is not Mr. Ron Paul's. Um, the actual sponsor of this bill, uh, and you should be proud of this, Mandy, is Representative Paul C. Brown from Georgia. Hey. Hey, I'll tell you. I I actually worked for his campaign. See? He he was running for, um, like I told Danik, he was running for senator because Saxby Shambliss will be retiring this year. And we had two Republican senators and – we're trying to keep the Democrats from getting the position. I shouldn't say we because I'm not in this circle anymore, but I did work for his campaign, and he's a good man and was endorsed by Paul, um, Dr. Paul. So, yeah, anyway. Well, it's, it's, it's really nice to finally see something like this actually passing somewhere. I mean, I really doubt it's going to go all the way because it still has to pass the, the Senate, and then it has to make it pass the veto and then it has to actually be enforced. And the the bill states that they're to audit the Federal Reserve within 12 months of it being of the act being passed. And we all know that they'll wait till 11 months and 30 days in order to actually get their butts in behind. And then it's 90 days after that they have to actually report it. And I'm sure the report won't come in for exactly probably 92 days. But when that on that ninety second day, I'd like to know what exactly does the government intend to do to punish itself for not following its own rules? Because as we've seen in New Hampshire with Derek Jay's um, concealed carry license case, they don't really have much of a leg to stand on when it comes to them not following their own rules. They could just kind of brush it off and like, oh, okay, well we'll figure something out. God forbid if you don't. I know. I mean, they just—you really have to really call them out on that. Otherwise, they'll just—they'll push you. They'll push you around. And I can't wait to see the continuation of the trial. It should be very interesting. Well, I just—I see this this case going exactly the same way. Well, not so, not so much case, but I see this piece of legislation going almost the exact same way. They'll they'll find some way to just ignore it, and no, it we'll won't. just continue work using Bitcoin, and we'll ignore the Fed. No, it won't even be ignored. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Harry Reid is just going to shut it down. He's going to ignore the people who are requesting that he allows this to pass. He's going to ignore the calls. He's going to ignore the faxes, just like he did last time, because everybody was swamping his office with communication. He's going to just shut the bill down completely. The last time they tried to do this, he was the sole cause of this bill going nowhere because he would not allow it to come to the Senate floor for a vote. Well, that's that's what it's saying. There's, an, there's another article um, dated in 2012 that says that supporters of Ron Paul and sound monetary policies uh, rejoiced online as they heard the passage of H.R. 459, which was the Federal Reserve Transparency Act back then. Uh, the new one now is H.R. 24. 
Um, their joy, however, was short-lived, as within an hour of the bill passing, word spread from the office that Harry Reid, that the Senate Majority Leader and Nevada Democrat, has vowed that the Federal Transparency Act will not be put to a vote in the Senate. So, yeah, like I said, it probably won't go that far. But because Lord knows that the moneyed interests aren't going to let any actual legislation be passed that's going to have any chance of helping this momentous snowball of a mountain called freedom and liberty to go any faster. Oh. They can't stop it anyways. Tyranny is back. Tyranny Phoenix is back. Tyranny Phoenix in the house. Yeah, when you get him going, oh, you, you don't want to cross his path. <laughs> all I'm saying is they can ignore it all they want. It doesn't really matter because at this point, the federal government is irrelevant without their guns. Yeah. If, they, if they're not pointing guns at you, they don't matter. Preach because it, brother. You can, use, you can use cryptocurrencies and you can be your own bank. Uh, you can use smart contracts and you can be your own lawyer. You can use um, government – Well, oh, what was that? Uh, there was a site that I heard the other day. Um, it's basically Government 2.0. It offers – all of the same services that government offers, completely decentralized. You can't compete with that, government. Sorry, all your guns and all your money does you no good when it comes up to true, decentralized, open source, Tor network, you know, onion server browsing greatness. Yeah, preach it. Man, and it's going to prove... Once and for all, that the only thing that keeps this federal government in power is their guns. It's not the consent of the uh, of the of the governed. That's for damn sure. We have entered Church of Liberty, people. Can I get an amen? Amen. Man, praise the universe. Did you I, say praise the universe? Oh, praise the universe. Praise the oh. universe, which. I didn't know that we had uh, turned into a church network, but all right then. Well, you know, if if Harry Reid's really going to do that, I'm not really surprised. I really hope that Nevada will pull its head out of its ass and stop reelecting him. Maybe maybe he won't get reelected this year. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, that's like saying if Obama could have a third term, they wouldn't reelect him. Yeah, not likely. But but uh, the interesting thing, or the sad thing, I guess I should say, is I was telling Danica, because Dr. Paul Brown was running for Senate, and he would, he came in fourth place. They had to have a runoff back in July. But because he was running for the Senate, he thought he had a real shot at it. Um, he is not going to be in office this next term because, you know, he, he didn't run for re-election. Um, so hopefully he'll get in again. But the really cool thing about him is that he's in his 70s, and he's still active duty military. I know how you feel about the military, and I agree. But for a man who believes in a cause so much that he's still active in his 70s, that's just pretty darn amazing to me. I'm pretty sure there's um, rules set down in the UCMJ forbidding um, active duty service after a certain age. He used to be a Marine, but he is now a Naval Medical Officer. So he works in the medical side of things. So I found it interesting. I don't know the rules. I'm not going to pretend to know the rules, but whatever. Yeah, I'm not 100% on them myself. So. Okay. That, that, it, is a, it is rather um, encouraging that the bill yesterday passed by a vote of 327 to 98. Yeah, and, you know, I was telling Danica that the last time it was up for a vote, I live in a very Democratic district in the state of Georgia. The district lines were drawn specifically that way. Uh, our congressman's name is David Scott. Good old and, gerrymandering. Oh, yeah, pretty much. And David Scott is a diehard Democrat. But for some reason, the first time we asked him to vote for this bill, we called his office, we wrote to him, we emailed him, asked him to vote for it, and he did. Nobody called this time, and he still voted for it. That's very cool. It is. Wow. It is. It's like he did something right twice in a row. It was amazing. It really was. Because the rest of the decisions he's making about our district pretty much suck. Well, 
I would say I think all of your how many uh representatives do you guys have? Cuz it's show I'm showing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 have 15. Oh, nine, 9 How many? 15. Uh and only 9 of them voted for it. You got to find those other 6 and shame them into voting next time. I'm not I looked at the vote and it didn't list the districts or the uh, congressmen by districts by state, so it only gave their names. So I'm not sure who it was. We have 14 or 15. I know, for anybody who doesn't know, when they're figuring out how many congressmen each state gets, it depends on population. Oh, Georgia, wait, I'm sorry. Um, I misread this data. This is, these are the people that co-sponsored the bill, I should say. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, nine, nine of them co-sponsored it. So. Well, I would like I, well, like I was saying that when they choose how many congressmen each state gets, they go by population. Georgia's population has increased, and it keeps on increasing. So obviously states that are losing population are losing members of the Congress, the House of Representatives, and they get added to states where their, imp- uh, where their population increases. So Georgia either has 15 or 16 now because our population has increased since the last census. Well, you know, there's apparently a few major actions that are that were initiated during this. Um, I'm not really sure how to read that. So never mind. I won't even try and uh, try and <laughs> so. He's not reading. <laughs> well, don't don't drive Danica crazy because she might get the urge to become a jihadist and go fight with ISIS. Yeah, I. La, 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 la. See, she's already talking like them. Oh man, that was incredibly horrible to say, but I just ugh, the those stories just broke my heart. Like they're so sad. Well, what teenage girl looks at this terrorist organization and says, "That's my lifelong dream. I'm going to worship Allah and we're going to go fight with ISIS." 16 and 15 years old. Well, any child's mind can be warped. They're it very can. Malleable. But what the the worst thing is is that these two girls left and now other teenagers are being intercepted at the Austrian border who are trying to leave to go fight with ISIS. Well, that's not very nice. They should have every right to go fight whoever she wants, whoever they want. Wow. Well, I mean, who are who's who who are the who do the uh, the authorities in Austria think they are to, to hamper their freedom of movement like that? Even if they're 14 and 16? Um, yeah, they're, you know, if they're mature enough to decide that they're going to go fight and die in a war, then, uh, yeah, I think I'd give them a little bit of credence. Interesting. Very interesting. I just think they're stupid. Oh, I agree. <laughs> but that's not, that doesn't mean that I have the right to tell them where they can and cannot go. I guess it's a different decision. You know, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't have any opinion to that. I just think they're stupid and I can't believe that. It's just shocking to me. I, I don't ever imagine that I'll come across any kid who's just saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and become a terrorist. That's a lifelong dream. I know. I just, you know, I've heard so many crazy stories, you know, anywhere from the Senate going to be suing Obama for what he said, but just girls running away to join ISIS. Like, it's just, it's completely mind boggling. I, can't fathom it. I don't want to. I don't even want to try and figure out what these young ladies were thinking. I just don't. It's just a sad travesty and their parents, I hope their parents are caring, loving parents, but um, I just I, I feel for them. I, I just I feel for them. Yeah, absolutely. I could not imagine hearing what they're going through. Just oh, those, those poor people. Absolutely heartbreaking. We We've talked about some interesting stuff tonight. We jumped from casual, casual, casual. Oh, insert important news here. More important news. More interesting, maybe not so important news. And here we are, back at the end of the show almost. We got maybe a minute or two left. So um, I just want to tell everybody, please stay tuned for the Proof Negative show coming up next from 9 to 12 Eastern. That is 6 to 9 Pacific. Anytime in between, figure it out yourself. My brain is fried from doing math. 
And please, if you listened to us tonight and didn't catch the whole show and you want to, just tune in tomorrow on YouTube at the Voluntary Virtues Network, where we're going to rebroadcast tonight's show from 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And if Um, you guys uh, haven't yet, please take the time out of your day to go to thefreedomline.com and download Adam Kokesh's book, Freedom. If you're on the fence about whether or not you want to be a statist, a minarchist, or an anarchist, that book there will clear your mind. Absolutely, but also I'll take this moment to uh, promote another awesome, amazing show, uh, Unity Evolved, Monday nights. And we usually, we don't do it live, so I'm telling you it's Monday night is pointless, yep. but we do have a podcast, and tell them you know where to get it, where where they get the podcast. You can check it out at unityevolved.com. There's a little button on the on the top right-hand side that says podcast. That'll take you to the SoundCloud, the SoundCloud site. And you can check out all of our past episodes. We're up to uh, 16 now. Uh, we just finished 16. It's in editing phase. And uh, it should be up in a couple of days here. Didn't he just add us to iTunes as well? We are on iTunes as well. That is correct. Yeah. So if so you can jump on iTunes, give us five stars if you like it, and uh, leave us a little message as well. Yeah. So if you love to hear us and you love the sound of my lovely voice and you love hearing Tyranny or Liberty Phoenix, whoever decides to make an appearance, um, come listen. We've got more friends that join us for the podcast, and we, we would love your feedback. Just whatever you think, let us know. Um, thank you both. Thank you, Danica, as always. Thank you, Ken, the Liberty Phoenix, for the last-minute appearance. We always love having you on no matter how long it is. We hope you'll be able to join us longer next week. Um, I am going to end the show with a song called There is Love by our friend Harrison Ray. He also does the intro to our show called Bells. We had somebody complain about our music, but you know what? I don't care what those people think. I really like this guy. So I'm going to close out. You guys, thanks. Thank you again for joining us tonight, guys. And I hope that you'll be able to join me again next week. So thank you, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful week. Rock on.